to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Your boy. Who's your, my boy? Your boy is back in the news. Who's my boy? Oh, uh, come on. Talk about Prince Andrew. Uh, Jesse, that you're. That was a strong. This is not a strong anymore. What? We've been losing you. Oh, what? To what? The royal family. I want to discuss that in depth today. Why? No need. Your hatred of Meghan Markle has been well documented on the show. Absolutely. Um, I'm really well documented. Because she will not fall in line with the tradition, Eh. the long-standing tradition of the royal family. (laughs) Look at the book behind you here. Subscribe on YouTube, Drinking Bros Podcast. The Marks, the Um, Markle. Yeah, uh, we've all combined to Drinking Bros Podcast, Ross Patterson Revolution, on uh, the whole YouTube sitch. Markle is right behind you. Yeah. Staring at you, mm-hmm. changing things. Mm-hmm. Maybe them things needed to be changed. No. Nope. Yeah. No. Nope. And they did. Because um, the Prince Andrew thing has come out. Are you watching all of these royal, I, I, I want to say documentaries, because I, I, like I saw you with a PBS documentary the other night. Well, so I watched The Crown, like right. I said. Well, and The Crown so is Netflix. I understand that. It's Netflix, but it's all historically factual. They embellish a little bit on like, conversations behind closed doors but everything else is pretty much is exactly, it queen elizabeth yes okay um and like prince charles and philip and like the whole thing that we know yeah, yeah, all yeah, of them yeah. we know starting from the very first day she found out she she had to be queen right? okay which was so crazy because it was only kings but anyway yeah. i think it's a a weird it's it's a fascinating family and it's all steeped in tradition completely. They, there's no... Do you know what I mean? I, look, I know all about the royal family. Oh, okay. It, it is brand new to you. and you. It's not brand new to me. You've dove all in. It's not brand new to me. You've gone all in on this. Mm-hmm. And you're having a hard time understanding what it is and why. Um, what is, what, I'm having what a hard... What the royal family does, why they're there, why it exists everything else and what their government goes through, why parliament is different than the prime minister and everything else. Like, No, parliament is not different than the prime minister. Yes. So there's a prime minister of the country. Then they have a parliament underneath that, right? Right, right. Um, so it's, he, it's, it's, it's kind of the same situation as our president. Parliament is the government and then the... Prime minister is the, uh, it's sort of their president, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he's kind of their Trump. Mm-hmm. It's Boris Johnson. Uh-huh. Um, now, the royal family has nothing to do with parliaments or the prime minister, but yes and no. they but pass yeah. them through things, and if they get a strongly worded yes or no or don't do this... Mm-hmm. Then they have to listen. It, yes. So the prime minister has meetings with the queen, mm-hmm. I think weekly or whatever, kind of keeping her abreast of everything, and right. then they talk about things, and they each are told to do... Things based on what is the perception and what is the what is right and wrong, whatever. It they is have one of the most worthless governments on the planet. Yeah, you know sure. that, right? Oh, okay. for sure. Okay. No, um, I'm not fascinated in that. I love it. I'm fascinated in that. It's just like so crazy that it's still uh, carrying on the way that it is. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing is absolutely ridiculous. And I think Homegirl got over there mm-hmm. and was just like, "Wait, what? This is this is what's going on?" Right. Fuck this. Right. Because she's an American and she's like, all right, cool, man. I've I've seen and done it all. Because all the shit that's coming out about Prince Andrew right now. Oh, yes. This is all the shit that goes on in Hollywood. And I bet you this is just another day at the fucking park for Markle where she's just she's like, like, yeah. Oh, cool. You guys are I getting mean, bent out of shape over this. Obviously. Because today the, the, the news story with Prince Andrew. And I didn't know he was married to, to Ferguson back in the day. That was the ex-wife, the redhead. Um she had a little more clout than than he did. He's always been kind of a snooze. Who? This this fucking Prince Andrew guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Nobody's cared about him. No. So today there's more photos that have been dropped, and this just keeps going on and on. Um, and it's 
it's crazy and awesome at the same time because this Epstein thing isn't going away. This the new one today. They've got him. There's a photo with him and uh, this chick. I'm actually going to give this to Ibby to put in our video show because um, you're like, eh. I mean, look like he just got finished getting his dick sucked. There's two masked topless women right behind him. Um, it's amazing. But he looks shocked that there was a photo of like, whoop, oh, yeah, of course. Whoopsie. Here's the other thing I don't understand about these kind of things. Who has the like disposable camera out at these like Glad you sex asked. parties? Glad you asked. Like, get that fucking thing away from me. Glad you asked. So there is what they're saying now is a possibility to this is that there was a photographer there for Epstein and he was using these photos and videos to blackmail all of these politician and high powered people all over the world. But you see the picture, right? You see the You're camera. seeing it now, but you weren't seeing it then. So I, I don't, I don't know what went through their minds during all this. Like if, if, if I saw a camera, I would freak out. I'd just be like, dude, no. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. But I, I guess if you wanted to go to the parties and that was part of the rules, like, hey, um, there, was a, there was a big, like, kind of like a VIP night in Hollywood back in the day, right? And the whole deal was you couldn't take pictures in there or whatever. But one person could. Yeah. One person could, and that was it. Um, I had not seen any of these pictures for years and years and years. These were... At a bar, so they were out in public. It wasn't shit like this, where it was just like eyes wide. This is some eyes wide shut type shit right Right, here. right, right. But I was like, oh, yeah, fuck, there was a camera there. And I, you just forgot. You know, or you just didn't think yeah. about it. So I am i don't know what the actual story is with this. You know, whether or not they did know or didn't know or whether it was like for shits and gigs for them of like, hey, you're at a party at this thing. Here's your picture, whatever. Ah, we, mm-hmm. we had a blast. I don't know. But the new thing that came out today was that uh, the prince's sexual appetites um, was on full display. For young. Uh, yeah. Young gals. Yeah. Um, where, you know, it, this one says that he enjoyed four handed massages. Let me be realsies with you here. I don't know anybody that dislikes that. Right. So, why that's right. a, a weird, a weird oh, thing. If you can get yeah. an extra set of hands during a fucking yeah. erotic massage. It's like when people post you like, take them. on Twitter, like, maybe it's just me, but I love breakfast for dinner. It's like, everybody fucking does. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's the stupidest thing. Of course. It's everyone's favorite thing, you fucking idiot. Oh, it's just me, but I like eating pancakes whenever. Yeah, no. <laughs> Soup's so, normal. There was some court papers that were also released. Um that said that uh, he was having sex with underage girls virtually every single day. So I'm not surprised by all this. Now, you said that he got kicked out of the the thing and, he, and the, the queen told him to pack his shit. Yeah, he basically packed his shit but made a statement that was like, you know, I regret. I just don't want to take away from all of the many charities that I donate to or work with. And you're just like, brag, shut up. Like, yeah, in this statement of me leaving for my appetite for young women, I'm going to leave this thing about charity. But, it, you know, nobody steps down or gets asked to step down unless there's a little fire. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, he's it, like all, he's all of this shit is dirt bag. True, his, yeah. uh, I think he they were wanting to see how that interview went mm-hmm. and it was disastrous. So after pretty much right after that interview. I'm sure the queen was like, um, you know, come into her room, which I know everything about now. And she like presses the little button when she's done with him and all of this. So she was just like, you have to step down. This is, I mean, it's ridiculous that that you haven't yet. Yeah. Uh, And he's, you know, the I'm and I'm willing to work with FBI, uh, you know, at any stage. Should it come to that? It's going to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's It's definitely going to to. act like. The way that they're getting away with it is acting like it's just, you know, if it comes to that, it's like you understand that this shit is not going away, right? You understand that somebody's building cases that are eventually going to come out. Like, don't think that, like, should it happen that I have to talk to FBI? I, yeah. I can't see this. I mean, it would be horrible if it just disappeared, right? I mean, well, 
Epstein just disappeared. So we'll right, see. But, but there's still the, that girl is still out there. Yeah. Like there, I, there's still many people to prosecute. Oh, there's a like, million. There's a million. million. So they're building a case. But because of the sensitive nature, <clears throat> Clinton's, they need to yeah. really like work. I believe, you know, behind the scenes before and getting lots of sources and corroborating and having real evidence before they come forward with it. But right? he, he was married to Fergie. I mean, this was this was the original Fergie before the Black Eyed Peas one, like the red haired one. And sure. I was just like, she was fucking super famous. Um, this is they got divorced a long time ago, obviously. But, uh, right. you know, I'm Which sure. Is very frowned upon. Yeah. Wow. I'm sure, uh, you know. She was going through the same thing that who was who was Princess Diana married to Charles? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was cheating on her with Camilla, the ugliest woman on the planet, which is crazy. But well, it was his first girlfriend ever. Oh, and uh, the family did not approve, so she, he married Diana. Married Diana, which they didn't really approve of either, but everyone loved her. And then he started. He was just like, I can't do this. I want to be with this girl. So, you know, it wasn't just randos. Eesh. And the way that the royal family Randos. is like br- breeds that kind of <laughs> shit because you're not allowed to marry who you want to marry. Yeah. Yeah. The king right before Queen Elizabeth was king for like 10 months. And because he wanted to marry a woman that had been divorced before, they mm-hmm. they took away everything. Yeah. Kicked I, him out. Oh. <laughs> what? I, I, I get it. It's just so fucking lame, isn't it? It is lame. The whole that whole shit. Like I don't care anything about it, right? At all. I, I as a kid, I remember like Diana, like Princess Diana, being super famous. You know, yeah. And I was just like, oh man, what an amazing tradition and all. This I want to get to the Diana years. And then you get you get you know older, and you're like, oh, the fuck, man! They can't even figure out Brexit over there. Um, this has been going on for two years. It mm-hmm. was passed. But it's not best. You can revote, and we can just keep voting and doing things, and then the queen can tell you things, and we can all do things, and then never do anything. And you know, London's now what is it, gun free? And so there's all these knife attacks. There was another one what a week I ago, know. and it was just like I will say, I've never been. You know, all these like shootings and stuff, uh, attacks. They're in certain areas that you go like. Okay, well, I'm still going to go there. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm not going to go to Philadelphia right, or something right, right, like right. this. But London Bridge, I'm going to tell you right now, like, I will not go there. Like, that's where all the stabbings are. They happen all the time. Yeah. It's tourists always. Yeah. And it's a shit ton of them. Yeah. So, like, just don't, you know, you can't ever predict where you're going to get attacked. But if you don't go to Lon- London Bridge, you're taking away a really big percentage of that yeah do you know yeah, what i mean absolutely. right absolutely absolutely um but it's i mean it's strange i don't know what's going to happen with that that uh whole stitch in that country because i mean what what once homegirl kicks it right which has got to be any hour now how old is no. she 90 she's not dying she 98 98 she's not sick the I, husband's still is she alive 98? i don't even know look i don't know i don't know either um, you could look up just Queen Elizabeth age, but, um, I know, but it looks like you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to let you do it. I don't want to like step on your, no, I appreciate you know, it. Thunder, she's 93. you know what I mean? 93, she's 93 years old. She looks a hundred. She'll be 90. Well, seven years away. She'll be, uh, she'll be 94 in April. So, and I was trying to think like, why are they both the, both of them still alive? It's because they don't do anything. I guess. So they I like I mean, literally it, it sit goes around. Against... They're waited on hand and foot every day, all day. So Charles is 71. Char- yeah. So it's he, like, cause he takes over, right? Yes. Yes. And so, it's just like, Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, it may skip him. It's going to have to go right to William. It might. Right. Crazy, man. Can you imagine? Oh, I was king for fucking. An hour. Two two years. <laughs> I waited my whole fucking life, dude. Why won't you die? Why won't you die? He walks into a room every night with a pillow and like doesn't do it. Yeah. But every night he's like, oh, no. gosh. Tired of being Prince of Wales, dude. That's fucking bullshit. So she was crowned um, in 1952. So she's been queen for almost 70 years at this point. Yeah. Like, we're good. My God, man, uh, that's it's weird. I bet you she 
wanted to retire at some point, but you can't even do that. Isn't that fucking crazy? I like, don't think she does. I really no, don't. Probably not. What else does she have going on? You yeah, know? it's true. It's uh, look. It's always interesting. I'm sure you hear about all this fucked up shit. Do you think it's always interesting? It kind of seems fucking boring. Yeah, but to I mean, look, totally look where you, it's just like, yeah. hey, here's what's going on, and it kind of can, can keeps you up to date. You don't have to do a lot. It's not like she's making public appearances all the time. She, I guess she used to, but she yeah, used to, for yeah, sure now anymore. it's like whatever. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah. So, um, I don't know. The whole thing to me, like, I'm, I'm just surprised you're watching it. And why are you surprised? The doc was a little surprising. Not the crown. Everybody loves the crown. Right. Um, but the doc was a little real surprising where I was just like, that was a standard guess, traditional British man boring doc. And I was oh like, yeah. man, you were. Look, but you know that I watch really boring stuff to go to sleep. <laughs> That's true. Do you know what I mean? I try and listen to the most boring, no offense, but stuff you should know. It was one of the first podcasts ever. Mm-hmm. But stuff you should know puts you to sleep. Right? Yeah. Um, it's very successful. It's always high on the charts. It's at least top 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time you look on the charts. Yeah. So, but it's very, it's just informative shit. And so it's very yeah. boring and it yeah. just sort of puts you to sleep. So I either listen to that or I try and watch boring stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you definitely do that. Uh, next up, I, I read this article this morning that's, it was super fascinating. It was called The Death of the Sex Symbol in Hollywood. And the, I don't know if you heard this, but Victoria's Secret is no longer doing their shows on TV anymore. Yeah. Remember they used to do the Christmas Angels and all that other bullshit and they flipped over to like, oh, we're going to have a trans, you know, Victoria's Secret model and fat one, a fat one, and, overweight ones and all that yeah, other yeah, shit. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> it. You know, and they were like, I don't understand why the ratings aren't doing well. Well, those aren't models anymore. Those are just normal people. So it, it doesn't make what you're doing special anymore or different than me going into fucking Walmart at this point. I think the deal with them was they were forced into being woke and you could tell that they really didn't want to. And so it didn't translate. So you should never be forced into you could tell the Victoria's Secret didn't want to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they were pandering and they were thirsty and all of these things that you're just like, all those things don't work for an old school brand that is classically the hottest women in the world, right? Yeah. And they were, their hand, their hand was forced and they were not into it. And so it didn't do well. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Um, and I think I want to believe that Epstein's involvement had something to do with it, but uh. I don't know. Uh, who knows? I, you know, going through this article, it's, it's, it's super fascinating. It's in the Hollywood Reporter if you want to give it a, a, a readsies. Um, they kind of break down how, you know, back in the early days, like the 30s and stuff like that in Hollywood, how it was trial and error, right? They, they were trying out these hot actresses, but you also had to be good mm-hmm. at it um, and for, for, for it to succeed and how, look, if you had, you know, Bridget Bardo and your movies or whatever, like they would do better and everything right, else. Right. And they lived and made a living off of being sex symbols. Mm-hmm. And they were also proud of it mm-hmm. after the, you know, this article goes into like after the age of me too and all that other shit, it has almost become taboo to say, Oh my God, that girl's a smoke show. She's super hot. And mm-hmm. that's why I'm going to see this mm-hmm. or, or that's why I'm going to watch this or right. listen to so-and-so. Um, and they were kind of just going through the age of how it's dying of like the Madonnas, the Madonnas and shares and all of them are mm-hmm. they're old mm-hmm. and it's, and there's no new ones. Yeah. I mean, what they were saying was the people that are new who could be them. Hollywood is refusing to market them that way because it doesn't want to seem sexist or that mm-hmm. they're hot. So it's like, you know, you roll through the nineties even, right? You would Angelina Jolie. You still had all the Bond girls, and you were excited about that. Mm. Now with James Bond, there is a, a female spinoff James Bond movie coming, and it's just like, mm. all right, but she's not. Who this, is it? Do you know? It's a black British actress. Okay. Um, it is not Halle Berry. She's the, not Holly Berry hot. It's a normal person. Sure. Um, but Gosh, Halle, Halle Berry could do it right now. So here's the thing. That's what... The, 
this article was saying of like some of the few that are left over that people can still look at them as sex symbols and get away with it is because of from the time they were from that it's still carried over. So they specifically mentioned Halle Berry and Jennifer Lopez in this article. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So with Jennifer Lopez, and I find it, this is why this this interview or this piece was so fascinating to me is that's two women who were in their 50s and they still look like they're 32 years old. And then I guess Jennifer Aniston, right? She was Rachel. She was like the hottest thing of all time. She's 50. But she was still the cute friend. You know what I'm saying? Like not the drop dead sex symbol of like. I guess. Yeah. Hey, man, you're going to get nude in this movie. And and the the reason I I say that is they brought up specifically in this article, Hustlers, the new Jennifer Lopez movie, which is about strippers. Mm -hmm. Right. Sticking up people and doing all kinds of shit. And they were like, look. She wasn't afraid to take a movie where she's getting on the pole and doing shit. Um, So she's obviously flaunting Mm -hmm. how hot she is and everything else. And she's not afraid of doing that. Whereas, you know, you're not going to see Jennifer Aniston as a stripper in a movie. Like, probably not. No. She did something in a movie. She had her ass out in uh, The Breakup with Vince Vaughn. But she had her ass out. She was like super sexy. Boss. Oh, and uh, horrible bosses. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that was great, then, but it was a that was a comedy. It was a hardcore comedy, right? Yeah, yeah. And then there was a movie that. She, oh, we, we are the are Millers. The Millers. Yeah. She did like a full on strip, like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. one scene. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe I'd throw Anna's in there, but she's fifty two, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's the new people, the new crop, like you know, and with what this article goes on to say is like the new crop of it. If you think of the hottest women right now, you roll through the 90s, you had Angelina Jolie. Check. Yes. During Gia. Yeah. 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 What up? Uh, gone in 60 seconds. All yeah. that stuff. Um, yeah. And then she. Up until getting with Brad Pitt. Yeah. yeah switched over to, to being a mom of nine. Mom of nine, a director, <laughs> a, like activist. Yeah. Uh, she's which going is to the UN and all that stuff. Nice. She's not but pulling then her tits she, out anymore. Right. And she's not eating either. So it was a problem. Yeah. But yeah, um, but you still had those. Whereas today, you know, you look at the ones that you could have had, probably Margot Robbie, mm-hmm. probably Jennifer Lawrence, probably. Yeah, that's that's the only two I can think of off the top of my dome right now. Sure. As far as like hot wise. Right. But for real. Mm-hmm. But they're not modeling them as that. They're not being packaged as that. They're being packaged as like serious actresses rather than like. Oh, this this is the sex symbol of the the movie or the thing, mm-hmm. and um, the packaging now. Scarjo, probably. Yeah, absolutely. But the packaging now behind it is different. Where you know the Scarjo thing, which we talked about a week ago, she's a badass punching people in the faces. It is not based like there's not a bikini shot of her getting out of the pool, right? You know, they're just not being packaged like that anymore. And it's everybody's worried of the blowback of the Peloton or the you know. Yeah, yeah. We don't yeah. want to look insensitive or too sexist Tone deaf, anymore. Yeah. Um, Where there used to be, uh, do you remember? Because I, I took, uh, I took my my child, uh, not yours, but mine. Um, took him to Walmart, and we were. They still have posters up, right? Mm-hmm. Remember those posters you used to pin up on your walls of like hot dudes or hot girls, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like boy bands now. Yes. Um, or but there is no or K-pop. Yeah, but there is no pin up girls anymore it was just like oh yeah. shit um there's yeah. like remember the fucking pamela anderson and like all mm-hmm. of them were just like yeah posters of them barbed wire my wall. pamela yeah barbed wire like come on that doesn't exist anymore well i think unfortunately we're trying to find you know we're trying to let people know that women have more substance which is just <laughs> like ugh. But why can't you be hot i just don't understand they you are know? hot though, like Margot Robbie, Jennifer Lawrence, like those no. are hot. Like they're hot. I'm but sorry, why they're can't not you... packaging them that way? But... but but there's no like the the age of the poster and the fucking thing and the like uh-huh. that just doesn't exist anymore. Um, well, you can blow up uh, Jennifer's nudes, make your own poster if you want. Look, I would if you would allow me that. You know, those were spectacular. Look, you and, can uh... <laughs> absolutely do that. And that's the thing. You can do whatever you want. The the, <laughs> the consequence is going to be what it's going to be, right? And and you will know 
that that <laughs> happened because of, you know what I mean. So I, I would love to have just a clear cut reason to fucking leave your no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> because it's so wishy washy now. You know, I can't be like, oh, he put up fucking. Once what if, I what say you came home? he put up nudes of Jennifer An- of of Jen- Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence, Lawrence <laughs> blew them up from a cell phone and put them in our room. They would everyone would be like. Yeah, you could leave him now. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> See? But now it's kind of like, no, he's a good guy. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, those you are have the posters s- you should see at Walmart, by the way. That's what you should be selling. Grainy, like is pixelated. The, yeah, like, the kinda, stolen yeah. leaked you, nudes from Jennifer Lawrence. You can't possibly Jennifer blow Lawrence. it up to have it be no. like clear still. It would be pixelated oh. as shit. And you'd have to be like, ugh. There it is right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was I was amped to get a, a sweet... There, like on my uh, Instagram from Oh, that's right. Pamela Bach. Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff. And so that is really his ex or? Yeah. She was on Baywatch. I don't know why she follows me on Instagram and likes all my shit, but, you know, that's nice. It's a nice feeling to see Hasselhoff at the end of an Maybe Instagram Maybe remind name, her. Like in your of shit. Her ex or something, yeah. <laughs> just, just, the, just the burger Knight eating Rider. incident. But yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, James. Thank no, you. no, no! Are you rolling around drunk on the floor? Yeah. You definitely don't do that. I was joking. Yeah, um, but we should do a parody of that and tag her. <laughs> there, it's been done. That thing's been done a million oh, times. Oh, I'm sure. A I'm million sure. times. I'm sure. Old so news. I looked. I had to look because I, I didn't know if they were still married or what the deal was. Uh, so they were divorced like ten years ago. Um, I think that it was the burger eating incident that was like the last straw of like, hey, you're you're all done here. I feel like they were already divorced, to be honest, because it was the kid, the the daughter, and then it really. It was right around the same time, so okay. I, I don't. You never know, yeah. I I'm almost positive they were married, and she was just like, dude, I'm fucking done with this shit. Okay. Um, and since I brought her up, I'll tell a story that's really fucking funny. Um, so the guys who produced the new guy, um, pro- had uh, the the rights. They just bought the rights to the Night Rider. Well. Knight Rider was executive produced by David Hasselhoff, right? Okay. And he was part of the project. So therefore he had to be a producer on it. He wanted to look at the car and the and cast help cast the guy. Because sure. it was gonna be a new Knight Rider, right? And I they ended up making it into a TV show, but the movie didn't go. Mm-hmm. And he was over at the office all the time and they were going over things, whatever, and just kept wanting to hang out. Just kept wanting to hang out. And it's, look, it's a nice office like this office, right? Right. We have a bar here and all mm-hmm. that stuff, but it's like, all right, cool. The bar is for guests. You know, we're not fucking doing shots all goddamn day. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Hasselhoff used to roll in noon, two o'clock, help himself to the, the bar. Okay. Um, s- start getting juiced up, you know? Start really hitting the sauce, wow. if you will, right? And Remember when you could do that? Oh, yeah, dude. Back in the day. But what, well, here's the thing. So he was not sweet about it, right? So there was a time where they had said, hey, man, you'd be great for this, you know, to roll in and do this. And I was like, uh, yeah, man, I'll, I'll meet with him. Like, I'll mm-hmm. I'll do the whole th- That'd be be weird, but it'd but be great. rad. You'd yeah. have to, yeah. Um, and so I went over, met with him or whatever, right? And I left, I don't know, 7 o'clock at night. Again, I was friends with him. So even sevens on a an ifish level at somebody's office where you're like, eh, everybody's got to get home, right? Yeah. But the problem is, you don't, you can't just, I'm, I was single, so I didn't give a fuck, right? I was like, yeah, if you want to stay and party or whatever, but Hasselhoff and then the producers and all that shit, like they have wives and kids and stuff to go yeah, home yeah, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just like, so I felt bad because I, they probably wanted to go home, you know? Okay. Hasselhoff didn't want to leave. Uh uh-uh. uh. Hoff didn't want to leave. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, so, um, eventually, they shuffled him out of there or whatever, right? And uh, um, two two or three meetings later after that that he was taken with other people, um, they were they just couldn't get him out of there. They were just like, hey, man, um, we're going to... Gosh. We're going to head out, but you can stay if you want to stay. Sure, you just know? lock just, up, Just I lock guess? up. Just leave the... It's, it's a system like ours. You oh, just, okay, okay. You, you walk, just walk out, out. Locks right behind yourself. You don't have to use the keys or whatever. No big deal. Came back in the work the next morning. Stop. He was sleeping on no, their couch. No, no, no. Again, no. the office is very similar to ours. We have a couch there. Imagine if <laughs> you come in, Hasselhoff still sleeping off a bender in your office and hadn't left. In this office, though, gold, amazing. In that office at the time, it was pretty funny. It was great, right? Yeah, I think yeah, it was yeah. pretty funny. Oh yes. And I yes. knew all of them that worked 
there, like all the assistants and everything. And like, oh, yeah. I know the guy, I was friends with the guy who found him, you know? And it was just like, oh, tell me it was everything you wanted it to be. So good. Yeah. And he was just like, it was, but then, you know. But then you have to come to grips with the fact that like, make this him coffee guy and shit. Is, like, you yeah. Know, oof. Like a one night stand that just wouldn't leave. Um, and this project kept getting passed around the studio. Days before calling an Uber. Yeah, exactly. There was no Uber or a, you know, a cab at that point was, you know, to get them out to wherever you were going to go. Like they, some people just didn't want to take cabs and things like sure. that. Whatever, right? Uh, they couldn't get the Hoff out of there. But this project ended up bouncing around for years. And luckily, you know, they parted their ways with Hasselhoff. And I thought, yeah. It's the end of my Hasselhoff connection. And then boom, Instagram. There you go. And it all comes flooding back. Yeah. Life is, what do they call that? Funny? No. Life is cool? Yep. What you make it. Awesome. And yep. it'll come life back around. Is awesome. And haunt your dreams forever. Yeah, life is a circle. But you get Circle to, of life. Yep. There it is. Okay. Sorry. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a circle of life. Um, <laughs> Life is a circle. <laughs> but no. they ended up making that TV show, by the way. I don't know if you remember it. It was on for a while, a few seasons. Was it? Yeah. I want to say like th- two or three seasons. Um, they, they, they redid the Night Rider and did the whole fucking thing. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of Uber. Yeah. Being awesome again. They just like cannot get it together, right? So they did an internal investigation of sexual harassment. Uh-huh. And they found 500 reports of rape sexual Oof. harassment or rape on both riders 50 percent were drivers and okay. 50 were riders right so they were, they were raping the uber drivers yeah Ugh, jesus but like how do we not know that you know jesus you don't really you don't have cameras and shit in there. yeah so i think the recording thing might be a Probably necessary. So, but, but it's, they did their own investigation and like were very transparent about it. Yeah. And you're like, bro, like that's not that's not going to help you, is it? No. What I, do you think about that strategy of them doing an internal investigation and releasing it to NBC and FBI about all of these reports about their drivers getting raped and drivers raping fucking riders? Yeah. I, you know. The strangeness of, of Uber has never left me. Um, I took one maybe two weeks ago, and it was, you know, they tell you what kind of car it is and who the person is, and it's just like fucking Willie, you know, Cadillac. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, all right. It was it was someone's grandfather who was driving his Cadillac and sure. just taking me to my house. Right. And, uh, it's kind of it was odd. Like, my grandfather used to drive a Caddy, you know, and I was mm-hmm. just like, man why what are we doing and you know i guess yes you're making money and all that other but not that much and the company that you work for now is it's the oddness of uber has never left me where i've never you know i don't know if i want to take uber by myself i would take it in a group of people i think in a group or with you but like i very willy-nilly would take ubers everywhere by myself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you I'd know look, what I mean? I, I took a cab home from the airport the other day. I told you that was great. So I was just yeah. Like, yeah. All right, cool. It, there's there's just a different feeling about it. I don't totally know. Totally different. Why? The trans. It's more transactional, right? It's a very clear cut transaction where you like. Yeah. It's a yellow car. There's a a plastic wall. You know what I mean? You're oh, yeah. driving me. There's not this weirdness of like. I'm in a normal car, but I'm sitting in the back. Mm-hmm. That still is very weird, right? Yeah. Dan will always try to sit in the front, and it, there's always it's always like filled with food or have their shit there. Like uh, they don't the want you riding in the front, right? You know, which is, I guess that's it makes sense, but it's just like it's I, I don't such understand a weird why you wouldn't like expect that someone would want to ride in the front, depending upon what your yeah, car you're just size like a is. normal person in your normal car. Yeah. Right. So the the transactional vibe of it is is lost, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's blurred. So you're like, do do, we, do are we gonna have sex? Are, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to. <laughs> Rape, right? So I don't know. Jesse, well, I'm trying to figure out how <laughs> you don't get raped in cabs. Like, sorry. 
it's a way lower percentage. Yeah. I, believe me. No, I know for sure. Because uh, you also know your own car. So if you were going to, you know, maneuver away in there, you know. Oh, yeah. If you're the driver, right? Yeah, like trying to get in the back like, of the yeah, cab. Like how does that, how do you get raped as a driver? I mean, gunpoint, I guess, or whatever. All yeah. This. Look, an NFL player grabbed a woman's pussy on a James Winston. And he got suspended for four games for it. He grabbed an Uber driver's pussy when he was hammered. I see how that can happen. Yeah. yeah. I see how that can happen. You reach around to the front of it. No, he was in the passenger seat. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably why they don't want you sitting in the front. Probably not. Uh, next up, we got uh, some sponsors, Jabes. Put this whole shit wagon on the air. You know? The whole thing. Huh? They're still doing that, huh? Huh? One of these days. What? One of these days they're going to call and say, no, we're, we're all done with this. <laughs> they can't, though, because you guys are buying. I mean, people are getting ghost beds. I talk to a lot of people that are like, I have a fucking ghost bed. Everybody. I'm getting another one. Everybody from ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. In our neighborhood. Yeah. When we go out, like to these like. Whenever we go out, the people always shout. <laughs> ghost bed. There's ghost John Jacob Jingleheimer. There's too. ghost bed. Uh, there's ghost bed. Uh, look, everybody's doing it. They've got a holiday deal here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it to you here because I said something about it on air. And they hit me up and they were like, yo, if you thought we were gang banging a Little Rock for uh, Thanksgiving, we're bumping our dicks up a little more for this next one. And I was like, oh, all right. Um, they're doing a holiday sale starting today. Um, so it's up and out. And this goes all the way through Christmas night at midnight um, at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Crixmix. Crixmix. Uh, you can save up to $370 when buying a mattress, um, which includes two ghost pillows. 370s is what you're getting off of the mattress. Doodle. Uh, 50% off an adjustable base when you purchase a ghost bed Lux. The bases, man, are, are expensive. So yeah. 50%, 50% off. That's insane. Come on, man. Come on. I can't. Come on, man. Uh, they're doing it. Dude, if you're a military or first responder, you get 15% off everything forever. So, like, you're all set. If you're fucking regular humans, I check the numbers on these deals, though. If you're, if you're military or whatever, like, look and see because that sounds like a lot of fucking money here. You know? Yeah. Um, I'm looking at their new pillow. Have you seen this? The shredded? No. So it's ghost it's ghost pillow shredded, which I think means that the memory foam type yeah, of yeah, thing yeah, is yeah, like yeah. it's more breathable. Sure. Ghost I like the ghost bed pillow, like the firmness They're and like favorites. the shape of it. Those pillows are my but favorites. if you don't like that, they have the shredded, which is That's new. The new They're fucking always doing awesome shit. Go to I know. They always com have a new something. Forward slash drinking bros today. Thirty six month no interest pay as you go program. No one is doing that. Blammo. Blammo, blammo. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. At strikeforceenergy.com. They've got four amazing flavors for your mouth and be whole. Uh, well, sorry. Maybe not. Uh, you need to calm down, dude. It's, you could insert a little in there, you know. Just, just you need to calm this down. This is the 750 milliliter bottle. I would bottle. use the pump, plastic. though, wouldn't you? Yeah, just, just pump put it in the there. pump. Put a put the tip of the pump in there. Yeah, yeah, kinda... yeah. Because otherwise, it'd be hard to get it up there. <laughs> the force of the pump is really going to get it up your up your uh, a bee hole. Um, but yeah, uh, and then it, look, it's a tasty tiny little tin pouch. You rip it open and squeeze it into any liquid available. Boom! Here it is, right here. Blamo. And they give you the same boxes from 7-Eleven, so you don't have to fucking Ziploc bag that shit, and it's messy or whatever. Like You're good to go. Rest it on your bar top or countertop. Uh, subscription of the month they have, which we've had for fucking years at this point. 40-pack uh, and a 10-pack and a 750-milliliter bottle. No carbs, no sugars. Last longer than five-hour energy. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Promo code REVOLUTION. 20% off. Last but not least, James, this is what people came for. Ugh. Ooh. Straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you like it? Ooh. I just looked over, and Donnie's face is like. Donnie O'Malley? 
Yeah. Donnie O'Malley is like staring at me right behind you. Yeah. Is that scary? No, you're Burl. Yeah. No, you've got an old man name now. So uh, he didn't cover his ears this time. So. He didn't. Um, He's got his young ears back. Wow. Well, He's no longer Burl. He isn't Burl today. Maybe, maybe not. You know, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways, that's a scary picture, by the way. This is the tip of the strike force, by the way. I'm showing us the audience. Can you put it? Up? Can the thing go up? Yeah, yeah, it goes up, obviously. But oh, okay. Um, and then you just push that. Boom! You push that down. We can do end. a tutorial. Yeah. On how to do this. Yeah. It's it's a lot like uh, R. Kelly. It's the remix to Ignition, you know. Let me see the pump. Boom! You can take that pump. Straightrazors.com's got everything you need to be a real man in this life. You can shave a dwarf. Ooh. You can shave your dad. Whoa, Jay. That would have hurt, dude. Man, so, you that would have went in my rectum like that. Dude, the force on this, bro. Yeah. You can really get some stuff up there if I'd you say needed what, to. I'll tell you what, open up this bottle and uh, put it in. <laughs> put it in for me. There you go. Hey. We'll do this live on air. No, uh, stop. Straight, We're not really doing it. Straight. Ra- no, I'm not putting it up my asshole. But oh, okay. I will put some in my drink. Um, <laughs> come on, Shaves. It's, what, a fa- it's, a fa- it's a family show. It is not a family show. Wow. If you're listening with your family, I judge you. <laughs> I'm judging you. Throw the, let the kids hear this. Uh-uh, no, bro. Straightrazors.com is great for shaving Ukrainian dwarf bushes all over the planet. God knows Ukrainian hates, you, the Ukraine hates dwarfs. They're shipping them off to other countries. Don't let them ship them off to you and fool, have them fool you as, uh, as an adult human being. Um, shave up. You got to shave them pubes. Uh, no, it's great. Look, it's Christmas. You need to buy a fucking kit, man, for your family. Um, brother, sister, mother, uh, whoever's in your life. Um, Got to do it, do it, do it. Go to straightrazors.com. Promo code revolution for 20% off. Jabes, are we all set up here? Yeah. Looks like it. What do you want? What do you need? We are all set up. To here put we go. that in something? Or? Yeah. Put, oh, it, okay. put it in uh, my water here. I need a little bit today. Boom. <laughs> That was a that, sh- that really shot out. Do you see like how? I mean, that pump is strong. It's great. Dude. Uh, you need that though. Oh, I, you do. I hate a soft pump. You know, I hate a soft pump, Jesse. What was the hard and soft song that you was it? Four strike. No. I, don't, I don't. I don't remember. But uh, I need a four hander. Oh, I think it's Ghostbed. I need a four hander for this. You know. Uh huh. I need a, a really. <laughs> Call me weird, but. <laughs> I like forehand. I just massages. like forehand and massage. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. You're the only one. Great. You're <laughs> you're it. You're the one person that uh, that needs that. Um. Call me crazy, but I'll just eat ice cream anytime. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the first thing I thought of when I read this. Um, Jay Z is 50 years old. James, 50 years old for Jay Z. <laughs> 50 years old for Jay Z. I mean. Yeah, right? No. What do you mean, no? He looks great. He does. He does. And he, yeah. Who knew he had hair all these years? I know. And now that he has hair, he looks even younger. Where he does like, look hey. younger. I don't know how I feel about it, but he does look younger. Um, anyways, they, they've they been doing this whole thing for Jay-Z and his, his 50 years on this earth. I only remember them doing this for like Jordan, you know, which eh, Jay-Z is probably look. on that Jordan level, right? I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, but they were talking about his, his complicated legacy in this article here, um, the Daily Beast, which I fucking hate the Daily Beast, but I'll, I'll read mind. anything. Okay. Um, I'll read anything to kind of get the, kind of the gist of it, of the, the ins and outs of this. The complicated legacy is this with Jay-Z, right? Sure. Started off dealing crack. Right. Um, but he was like one of those like, w- you know, crack dealers with the heart of gold, right? Probably not. No? Okay. Yeah, still don't know any of them. It's really how he like made it seem in the documentary, but yeah. Yeah, right? (laughs) Yeah, like he wouldn't, you know, like he had a conscience about who he was selling to and, you know. You bet. You bet. Um, Carry on. Anybody with uh, money is probably who he was selling to. Okay. Um, But you see, look, you start off dealing crack, become a huge rap star. Right. Become a cultural icon, sure. marry a cultural icon, mm-hmm. cheat on her, sure, which is frowned upon, obviously. Get kicked in an elevator. Remember I don't that know. whole talk sitch? To G- talk to Jim, 
Justin Timberlake about it. Well, Doesn't matter. He released an apology, and so did Jay Z. Right? Uh, you kicked in an elevator by your sister. Oh, but remember that whole shit? Yeah. Did he do anything though? He didn't. He push didn't. or do anything. No, 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 right? no, no. Okay, she, yeah. He. It was. It was Salon. She was right. just like, "Yo, I'm not here for this bullshit." Oh, for sure. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. Um. And they had that footage. Uh, then he goes on to kind of become an activist. Okay. He's helping out Obama and sure. all that, that, that nonsense. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, after that, the Kaepernick sitch. Sure. Says that nobody should start playing, doing things, you know, to help out the NFL. Now he works for the NFL. Right. And it's only his label and his artists that are performing at all these events. The Super Bowl and all that shit, the, the performers have to go through him. He is kind of the manager, so to speak, for the NFL on hiring musical acts and talent and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. the activism thing kind of went out the window. Sure. Once he signed that NFL deal. Wow, doesn't it always? Uh, the basketball team, money? Brooklyn Nets. Mm-hmm. Um, another complicated issue where he wanted to bring an NBA team to Brooklyn. However, to do that, they had to knock down all of those shitty areas that he grew up in. Oh, that's right. And dude. all those people got pushed out Mm -hmm. so all the people that all the poor blacks that were living there just fucked with that area for so long Dude, there was a crazy behind the scenes of that where that because that area went through hell for like if you were anywhere near there and you like kept your nicer place fuck yeah look i mean you're fine but you know they were pissed at him they got bought out so his own people that he grew up with all got bought out um, for I, the money wasn't terrible, um, you know, but they didn't want to move. It was the problem of like, hey, we like where we live and we built this city. We were we are this city and we want to stay here. And they were like, nah, we kind of need some white hipsters to move in here and make eighty dollar pizzas. Yeah, exactly. Um, which we know, <laughs> you know, Roberta's. Fuck. Uh, yeah. You're welcome. Um. And uh, and then two years after the Nets are finally there, he sells his percentage, gets out, becomes a sports agent, and um, leaves the area completely. So, I don't know, man. I, with the complicated legacy thing, if you're trying to become a worldwide icon like this, I think shit like this is going to happen. Um, I think he genuinely probably went in with the best intentions uh the kaepernick stitch he showed his ass at this fucking workout a couple weeks ago and jay-z was pissed off about it because i have a feeling he set that up this workout what was jay-z pissed about that he didn't do good no that he canceled so he uh, an hour before kaepernick canceled yeah he moved the venue he canceled the venue it was at the falcon it was at the Atlanta, atlanta falcons facility uh, he canceled the venue. There was like 24 teams that were showing up. Um, they had to scramble and try to figure out where he was. He wouldn't sign this deal with the NFL over, you know, if he got hurt at the workout or whatever. Like, uh, God, I hate him so much. Exactly. And everybody hates him so much. And Jay-Z, finally he after this Finally whole, is like... Yes. Okay. And everybody else after this incident was like, fuck you. So, like, the Kaepernick thing, I think he will be forgiven for. Yeah. Uh, and if his sole intention was to have more diversity and more say into these Super Bowl halftime shows and performances, like, look, it's in Miami this year. Putting Shakira and J-Lo together, who are Miami icons, was probably totally. right. Because, look, I was in Atlanta for the last one last last year, and it was just like, I was at the game. I was mm-hmm. like, why the fuck is Maroon 5 playing here? Like, Has nothing we're in Atlanta. To do. Yeah. We have amazing artists in there. Like, yeah. It yeah. could have been anyone. You could add Usher, Jermaine Dupri, fucking. But it was the white ass NFL that was like in charge. Yeah. So look, he is changing things. Um, I, I, me personally, I love Jay Z. Um, yeah. I, you know, I've always enjoyed his music. I've been to the last couple albums. Uh, it's just kind of been bunk to me. Um, but it's hard when you're that rich to care and be in touch with things anymore. And this is what we always bitch about with, um. Or what I did about Coldplay, where I was just like, yeah. Look, it may be true that, you know. You're rich and out of touch. Maybe. Mo money, uh, quite, you know, in fact. Mo problems. In fact, is mo problems, right? Yeah. Um, But I I think all of this 
the shit that they bitch about in this article and about his legacy, man, if you're trying to become that, like a cultural icon forever, shit's not always going to be kitten dicks and kaleidoscopes on this one. Mm-hmm. So I don't really have a problem with, with all of it, to be honest with you, because if you're looking at the bigger picture of what he means to the society or black people as a whole, right? shit like this is going to happen. You can't, you know, you can't build a f- fucking stadium and expect everything to be normal around that stadium anymore. That just doesn't happen. Um, is it for the better of the city? Yeah. I mean, look, I went to Brooklyn back in the day, nineties where mm-hmm. you're just like, Hey man, we're going to call you a cab from your dinner table to get you out of here because it's not safe. Right. And they would the, the, literally, you would pay the waiter would walk you out. This is when I was in grad school. The, the, the waiter would walk you out to the cab um, because the people in the neighborhood knew the restaurants and the waiters and they didn't want to fuck with that. Mm-hmm. And they put you in the cab and you left. You never waited outside. Dead serious. Wow. I called it from the table. Um, is that at Luger's? Now, yeah, yeah. Um, but now. Oh, dude. You go to Brooklyn. It is fucking phenomenal. I, 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 I was there. What did I have a meeting there a year ago or whatever it was? Like it was I the whitest been, shit of all time. I was just like I haven't been since the bad days, right? Uh huh. So last time we went, I almost was like, let's just go, go to the Robertas over there, or whatever. Yeah. And see what it is, because I still haven't seen the Lena Dunham of it all. Do you know what I mean? Like. So I think at some point I should check it out. We'll skate over there. I went there. I was with my Such agent long, and we went to a restaurant over yeah. there. It, look, it is still like a 20 minute commute over right. the bridge and all that shit. But, um, you know, it is not what you thought and no. or think. And it no. is currently happening in Harlem and Queens mm-hmm. and everything else. So was it eventual anyways? Probably. But, you know, look, he brought a fucking franchise there. I mean, that's pretty incredible. It um, is. He bought, brought a basketball team to his city, essentially. Him and a Russian billionaire, which people overlook, but uh, it was. It was oh, a yeah. Russian billionaire. Now it is sold to a Chinese billionaire who owns that team. Sure. Um, the guy, one of the co- co-founders of Alibaba now owns it. Okay. So it is what it is, but mm. looking back at his entire life and all of this stuff, like, Man, it's pretty incredible. I, it's probably him and Puff Daddy on that level. Yeah, but he surpassed Puff Daddy a million times over. I think so, but is part of it because of who he married? I Maybe. look at it. I look at it that way. Um, where if you're following the Kanye model right now, oh yeah, with the Kardashians. Mm-hmm. I mean, shit. I like this idea though. I like the idea of the power couple i was talking uh to tiffany about this Mm -hmm. um as far as like us being anti-feminist in that we aren't like against women we actually are very for pro what all of this but i think when we work together men and women yeah fully together awesome shit can happen clearly yeah do you know what i mean where you're not trying to do everything the other one's doing or trying to Both ways, if you are staying in your lane of expertise Mm -hmm. as far as gender goes, right? You can really do some fucking awesome shit. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Either together as a couple or together in a company with both men and women or whatever it may be. Like working together, not all women or all men or whatever. Yeah. uh, I think that's where the best shit happens. So those two, you're right, probably... I think that skyrocketed once they got together. Shit, yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. So, I, I don't know. And I think that was the only thing that was different than Puff Daddy, essentially. Because, look, Puff Daddy tried to buy the Carolina Panthers last year um, here. And it ended up going to somebody else. But uh, he's close. And look, you look at Sean John and yeah. all of his brands. This, the vodka, Ciroc, like all, all of oh, it. Shit. I mean. Forget. Puff Daddy's still Puff Daddy, dude. The clothing, I mean, the clothing line, like, Jesus Christ. He's got yeah. Sean John's. He's got Puff it all. Puff Daddy gets a table. He has Ciroc bought over. He signs the bill. And it's all just, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
It's just this weird cycle of like everything it's, going into his pocket. Very smart. It's amazing. And um, I think and the difference. And he has the reality show stuff too. But do you remember when Puff Daddy was do. dating Jennifer Lopez? Yeah. That could have been. That Exactly. Imagine now. That was the height of his bullshit. Yeah. And now, you know, once that fell apart, whatever. And I, I, I will say this too, even with J-Lo. Like once she got. I mean, her husband, what was this, Mark Anthony? Yeah. Once she actually coupled up with him, had the kids, she really did do much better. And even yeah. more so now yeah. when she coupled up with that dingling. But whatever, it's still, you, you, the perception is what? That you're more stable, right? Mm-hmm. You're stable, you have support, you have like this, this unit that people are counting on instead of just Sean, right? Yeah. By himself, which is great, but you don't know what fucking kind of bullshit he's going to, you know, the baby mama is going to do or whatever. Right. 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 And in business, now that we do are doing it, too, you think about that shit, right? You think about who Jared's going to fucking marry, right? Because <laughs> you're like, dude, <laughs> you know, hey, it's part of the fucking we company, bro. Deal with like, it, bro. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I look back on it. If Puff Daddy marries Jennifer Lopez and that stays. The same way. That would have been it. That would have been a monstrous. Yeah. Monstrous. And the if only Kanye didn't get with Kim Kardashian, I think would he, he would be in an insane asylum right now. I'm not joking. Would he have the clothing line and all that shit? Probably not. He wouldn't have anything that he has right now. So I, he'd That's have the, the music. I don't know if he'd be alive. You're right. He's always had the music, but remember, like, he was definitely going down a real crazy path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. even when they were together, people were like, what? Yeah. Him? Like, they were like, uh, she was more on a pedestal, right, than him. And you're like, oh, what are you doing with this crazy guy? Right. And he, br- she brought credibility to him. Because if she liked him, she's very stable, right? If you're vouching for him, then it's easier for everyone else to vouch, right? If Beyonce is vouching for Jay-Z, you're like, well, okay. Must I guess right. we can too, right? Yeah. Just trying to figure out what it, what it actually is. I don't know, but uh, either way, Happy fifty, Hove. I don't I don't I don't look at any of this shit as fucking negative, dude. I didn't know what that I it took me one second. To figure that out. Happy fiftieth, ho. I mean I don't but the, I know, I know. Hova. And I know. Yeah. But it ju- it re- it struck me the first way. Uh, it shouldn't have. You know? Yeah, no. Well, that's how I, know I am. Him. That's how I know him, Jabes. Sure. So, as you are white, white, white. Yes. Uh, <laughs> am I though? As you know? snow. Yeah, as snow. Nah, I'm uh-huh. not. I don't know. As untouched <laughs> mammoth snow. Pure uncut snow. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the end of the year movies are coming in. The awards and all that shit. Like we're getting into that time period. We have so now. many to watch, dude. What do we? Let me, let me ask you that because we usually get the screeners. We, yeah. we get the screeners every year for uh, screen from the screeners deal. that I've seen. We've seen the Joker, mm-hmm. and that's Irishman, and the Irishman. Mm-hmm. Uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood. Okay. So this is why I say this: the two movies that are going back and forth now. Uh-huh. Uh, the AP, the Associated Press, just gave the movie of the year away to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Don't agree with that one. Okay. Uh, the okay. critics went to Irishman. I look. I think it's Irishman. Okay. I don't. I I love Tarantino. I just I don't know what movie they were watching when they. I'm gonna. I I, I feel like I should rewatch it because I feel like I'm the idiot on that one. You do need to rewatch it, but I hate that you because they did too. Whoever's doing these right. Yeah. They watched it a couple times, but I hate that you have to watch. You a, a best movie you should not have to watch no a couple times to get it. Irishman, I watched it, loved it. That's it. That's Boom. it. I'll probably never watch it again, um, and that's awesome. Yeah, for sure not. But um, Richard Jewell, we need to see. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. Is Queen for and sure. Slim in this? There's other ones that I've when I see other people's screeners because we have a couple friends that are in SAG as well, and they're you know they put out all their screeners. Yeah, I'm like, oh shit, we have so many. To watch. Do you have a list of them? Yeah. But, uh, the Tom Hanks movie. Uh, <laughs> oh, I look. I again. I want to see that. I would just. Uh, yeah. I, I'm waiting we have for the to screener. See it. I'm not juiced, yeah. but uh, we have to see it. Well, we're not juiced because we saw that. We just saw the documentary. <laughs> um, I'm not juiced off by that. I'm not. I'm, I'm not, not squeezing four-handed. my beef. I'm not squeezing my beef into a ziploc. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not squeezing my beef on that one. I'm no. not four handed 
juiced on that one. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's that one. Um, Richard Jewell. Richard Jewell. Uh, there's a, there's a handful of these, but you know the Fox movie, Roger Ailes. I'm blanking on it now. Okay. Um, the, the thriller. And with, these are all for your consideration, right? Correct. Or are they nominated? Okay. Correct. These are for your consids, mm-hmm. and um, and we'll see. We'll yes. see. But I'm already sold right now. So Joker we've seen, obviously. You already know? Is that what you're saying? Best picture is going to be The Irishman. I can guarantee it. I can promise you right now. That okay. is going to win the Oscar for best picture. Okay. Golden Globes is always a weird thing where you're just like, eh. Yeah. Who knows with that? But okay. uh, for sure, I okay. think uh, it's The Irishman. Okay. Hands down. Uh, last but not least here, I want to talk about this uh, banana duct tape to a wall that just sold its uh, Art Basel for $120,000. I don't want I... $120,000. <laughs> it is a banana. Everybody's been posting this and talking about this today. Mm-hmm. It is a real banana that someone just duct taped to a wall and it sold for $120K. Uh, Maurizio Catalan's Latest work of art. It's called The Comedian. And it's entertaining art lovers from around the globe. Um, my God, man. My God, man. These are some of the same art lovers' conversations when they that swirled around his 2017 golden toilet. Um, it's Art Basel, dude. That shit just... I don't. It's all shit like that. What are you going to do with a banana tuck tape to a wall? Like, Because that's going to go bad in a week. <laughs> Is it real? It's a real banana. No. Yes. Yes. So it says the first two pieces were sold for 120K. The third is being sold for 150K. It is a, it is a real banana duct taped to a wall. What do you do with that? Javes. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I mean, what are we even doing here? What is life, right? What is it all? What does it all mean? I think something like this. It should be mandatory that they release the name of the person who bought this and put that out into the world, so that way people can hit them up and be like, "Hey, man, the fuck is wrong with you? What's going on with you? You know what I'm saying? That bought it? Yeah. Yeah." Like, who bought this shit? $120,000 for a real banana, just a banana duct tape to a wall. It is nothing more than what Did I've you said. Say banana? There is no. Yeah, was it, oh, was it banana? Was it a banana? Was it a banana? Oh, well, that's different. There's nothing more than what or I've banana. said than mm-hmm. that. It is literally. It can't be real. There's no painting around it. There's no but nothing else. But it can't else. be a real banana. It's a real banana. That Maybe that's part of the art that it only lasts. A week, you know. I get why it's called the comedian, where you're just like, oh, you're slipping on the banana, or whatever, right? Like, but this is why, you know, when I tell you I don't, art is dumb. Yeah, art is stupid, and museums are for losers. <laughs> this kind of shit. <laughs> why? And now we're talking about it. Everyone is. I keep seeing posts about this all morning long, and I'm like, oh, my God, dude. Are we here with the banana duct tape to a wall? We've been there. We've been there. Is that what we're doing now? Yeah, yeah. We've been there for a long time. It's like empty boxes. You're just like a white box. Damn it, um, man. The joke of like someone being like, oh, this piece, and it's the fire extinguisher of the museum. Yeah. And you're like, oh, my God, this is gorgeous. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, it's not. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not actually art. It's just we need it. <laughs> like... I don't. I don't do art. I don't do art. No, you don't. You I don't, don't like James. it. I don't like art. <laughs> you know what I mean. I understand. <laughs> I understand why you don't like art. I don't like art. I don't really give a shit about it. I go through like we were. At, I was at Hobby Lobby buying uh, things for the chili cook off mm-hmm. the campaign cook off, and I like the shit in Hobby Lobby. Like I'm fine with that. I don't need to go to an art gallery and yeah. squeeze my nuts out and you know. No. <laughs> Why are you squeezing your nuts out at the art gallery? Just you're like, tugging you on them, trying to figure this? it out. Just like, uh, what is this? Why do I need this? Why do I need to buy this? Why am I looking at it? And then you it? eventually empty your nuts out. I mean, I, I pull them out. I tug on them, you know, 
pull them straight down. Oh, what is this? Why do I need to buy this? What are we doing here? Oh, fuck. The last time I went to one of those things was in... Oh, shit. Where was I? I was in Dallas, Texas. Uh, <laughs> friend of the show, Xander. And I went to his friend's art. Oh, yeah, but... Thing. And, that was uh, more like home decor, wasn't it? It was cool, yeah. It was like cool stuff to put in your cool house. Yeah. And that that's not that's not like an art gallery that's like none of an this anthropology. shit like a banana duct tape to a wall is not functional to me of like, oh, we're I know the perfect place for this in my house. Right. Where? In the fucking toilet? You know? In the garbage, eventually. I mean, <laughs> in the garbage, right? Unless I guess like or our producer just said leave? Jamie just said, "Hey man, if it's hermetically sealed it has to be that's why i said it can't be a real because it couldn't have gotten to the point of being able to be sold no bananas turn so quickly so like is it yellow you saw a picture of it right yeah it's yellow still it's but it's kind of but it's turning yeah there's some black marks on it (laughs) you're welcome james and how Uh, do you spell banana pine cone day is coming up (laughs) Huh? Pinecone Day. Is oh my up. gosh, the sixteenth. Yeah, December sixteenth. So I wanted to remind everybody to get ready for that. Jimmy Tree Legs. Oh, Jimmy Tree Legs. Do you remember last year's episode for Pinecone Day? Wasn't it the only one we've done? No, we did. We've done two now. We've this done two. Two years now. What yeah. was the, this will be our third year of doing? What was this? <laughs> our third year. You brought <laughs> third lit up pine annual. cones and everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I talked about pine cone trivia for a half hour, and you were <sighs> so pissed off at me. But you were doing it to piss me <laughs> off, so everyone wins, right? <laughs> everyone wins. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, um, just was it, so just a quick reminder. That's we're only ten days away from pine cone day, so if you haven't gotten your loved ones a pine cone, and that's what it is. We just get pine cones, right? That's it. I have to be reminded every year. Yeah. And then I'm horrified when I think about what it actually is, which is like that big Shuffling slender down. man yeah. type of figure yeah. that comes up to the kids' windows Shuffling in the middle the of the night. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And gives them nothing but a good scare. That's it. Yeah, which is so good. A right? good fright, you know? We don't do Elf on the Shelf, so everyone... And he puts pine cones inside the children's beds so when they, when they, and all over the floor so that when they wake up, they're just rolling around in pine cones. So I think this year we can actually get the kids into it. What do you think? Yeah, for pine cone day for sure. Yeah, and then we need to get you some kind of Groot costume because you're going to be Jimmy Tree Legs. Yes, yeah. obviously. And you're going to actually go to the kids' windows. Yeah. Because they aren't scared of their own shadow enough. And just... Mm-hmm. It's Jimmy Tree Legs. Jimmy Tree Legs. I have a message from Santa. Now, do you... you Jimmy Tree Legs has a direct line. To line. Santa? No, he does not. Oh, he's a hor- he's a horrific man. Yeah, he not is, nice at no, all. Right? No, no, no. He's not. He didn't come to get your toy order. That's not for at sure. All. But a lot of people were asking because um, so we've been getting messages for the last week about getting ready for Pinecone Day. If we were going to have a shirt, and oh. yes, we will next year. I promise. I'm super sorry. We did not do it this year. <sighs> we wrapped up in the campaign shirts and all that stuff. So oh, that's right. Um, I will. We will do a Pinecone Day shirt next year. A uh, green one with a nice brown pine cone, December 16th. I think it should be, yeah. And Jimmy Tree Legs. I think it should be a, a terrifying Jimmy Tree Legs. Yeah. Yeah. So we will do that next year. Sure. And we will be celebrating Pine Cone Day. Uh, do you still have the necklaces and all that stuff you made last year? Yeah, I must have them somewhere. Yeah. You got to pull those out. That was the weirdest episode of all time last year. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, because we I think talked I was about drinking it one year. rum and eggnog uh, on there, which you should do. Oh, yeah, you start. Well, the thing is, you start around the 10th. So that's why, probably why Jim, the whole Pinecone Day came about. Yeah. Because you start with the rum and eggnog pretty early in December. No. Daily. So I, it's it's one of my faves. It's one of my biggest weaknesses. Um, is is eggnog? Or Everybody best. knows I'm I'm a nog dog. I nog out. I nog out with my log out. Sure. And uh, I that could be a good yeah. It is the most fattening drink on the planet. So therefore, I've limited myself to okay. only Christmas Day <coughs> okay. of eggnog. But maybe for the Pinecone Day, I will indulge. Because on Pinecone Day, you know, it's the opposite, right? 
What do you mean? It's it's rum. It's a whole cup full of rum okay. and a splash of eggnog. Oh yeah. Whereas yeah, on yeah. Christmas, <laughs> it's uh, you know eggnog and a splash of rum. Yeah yeah but yeah. Pinecone yeah, yeah. day, you're Ooh. terrified. Yes. And you're gonna need. You're scared. You don't know a what time he's coming. Glass of rum. Because he's un- he, he's as unpredictable as he is terrifying, yes, right? Yes. Yes. Which is so fun. Yeah. Which is always the. the it's best. always the most fun if someone's really unpredictable and terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we added that little thing this year, and we're going to just keep adding fun little things to the legacy, we, to the uh, legend. The legend of Jimmy Tree Legs. He will be back. Ten days we'll be doing a Pine Cone Day show, kids. So get ready for that. And uh, now it's time to get to the revolutionary figure of the day. Shall we, James? We shall. Let's give it to Queen Elizabeth. <clears throat> It's for that you. bitch will not, not die. die. Won't die. Won't die. And now, I would give it to Prince Charles. To be honest with you, now, oh my God. Well, you, you're more popular than ever with all of this royal shit that's going on, man. I think it's like I was trying to think about it today on the drive over because I knew I wanted to talk to you about it. I think it's the nostalgia too of it of like, you know. I think. Well, the other thing I was thinking about, off topic, kind of on topic, is the the new crazy fascination with Mr. Rogers. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're one and the same, right? And there's like a bunch of podcasts. There's all the the documentary, the movie, and it all was at the same time. And it's no Finding Fred, is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, and it's not, and it's it's good, but it's the same thing. It's talking about why right now, Mm -hmm. in particular, we are fascinated with this very, with this guy and this idea that he had and the genius of him, which he, he was and he really was. Did you watch it as a kid? Mr. Rogers? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then I guess it would kind of go along with the royal family in that it's very simple. Well, I it's think a very simple existence. You just like you fall in line. Yeah. You do this everything, you know, and if you do that, you will be OK. Right. And I had a I had a conversation about this last night with um, there was a little Christmas party in the neighborhood for the kids. And I was talking to a couple other parents about it, what they were going through. And like um, one of our friends, Jana, sh- she was mm-hmm. talking to me about the frustration of uh, her daughter using a phone. Yeah. A cell phone. At, mm-hmm. and she's 13. And I was like, man, that is something that I did not. And this is a conversation we had. I was like, I, this is something I did not have as a, as a child. And I wasn't, we didn't have cell phones at all. Therefore, I wasn't on a fucking phone all day and all this no. other shit. And like. You know, I told her, I was like, my biggest fear as a parent is because I'm on my phone all day. It's hard to tell my kids now at this age, I'm on my phone. Daddy's on his phone because he's working um, and I'm not just perusing fucking Playboy or something, right? Um, Playboy? Is that a whatever, thing man, anymore? Jabes, it's Playboy's a fucking fashion magazine now. It, that's what I'm, it's, I'm looking for high fashion tips, right? Not looking for Playboy? anything more than that. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try Pornhub. Please. All right, all right. Okay. Now we're getting into it. It's I'm not Pornhub looking and at X video. Pornhub or X vids. Okay. Um, Playboy. But I, in, in talking to her about it, she, and I was like, how do you navigate this now? Because I'm, you don't, I'll have to go through that. She talks about it all, like she is distraught. And I understand, daily. by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and again, simpler time where you look back on it and you're like, ah, shit. Well, I called my mom at her house. It was a home phone. She was gone. There was a message on the answering machine, and that was it. Right? Mm-hmm. Simpler times of that, and then I, because I was, I was telling her my razor story after that. Of like, look, I want a phone that just the flip phone. I don't text, call, email. I don't have right. to post anything on social media. And I right. go back to that, and I was like, probably for the same reason. It was just a simpler time where you're just like, all right, great. I don't have to worry about all this fucking bullshit. Yeah. Um, so. But I also think. From listening to this podcast, it's interesting, but um, it the main thing with Fred Rogers, whatever Mister Rogers was, yeah. trying to help kids deal with feelings. So, like when Kennedy was assassinated, mm-hmm. the very next day, his episode was one of the puppets asking, "What is assassination? Like, why are, why is my family talking about this?" Sure. And so, th- that's not something that you can do now. Like we we have to be so like 
you can't talk about it and you have to be very you know no triggers no let's just I'll talk about all that put shit. it under we will right yeah. but if you're talking about kids tv or even sesame street it's crazy if they talk about you know sure. divorce yeah, yeah yeah right whereas he was tackling stuff head on and talking about kids being able to feel stuff about whatever's going on and treating them like adults whereas now we shelter them and don't want any triggers and don't want any shit until they freak out when they're older and they see all the sh- the real world right but anyway um so, so it's interesting. With, with all I this might stuff have the kids watch it but yeah yeah with all the stuff the queen and miss rogers and everything else like i I think we all want something I think that's simpler. the fascination of it now of, of why you see all these shows and everything else where it's just like, hey, man, things were easier, a little simpler. I think it also is like friends, things like this where people are like, hey, it was simpler, yeah. right? Like, yeah. let me just watch something that makes me feel good, <laughs> yeah. right? And is like easy. You get it. There's no highbrow anything. It's not controversial. Like, Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We're living in, an, in a nostalgia r- renaissance. Nostalgia songs. Yeah, and I think it'll only increase Trademark. because of the pressures of social media and everything yeah, yeah, else yeah. where it's just like this is constantly jammed in your face all day. So Bespoke stuff, artisan, doing things the inconvenient way because it's like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I grind my own coffee. There's a fucking uh, the coffee worst one, grinder I, right I, there. You know what? The worst one is this. I'm actually going to pull this up for the video show here if you're watching on YouTube. This was my worst one. Um, running late to work uh had to get some stuff for the the party and whatever right I, I forgot my chapstick you know i'm addicted to chapstick sure i ran into a place and i was like hey do you have any chapstick and they were like oh yeah it's, it's back there whatever right and i was like mm-hmm. this? this is the this is the only chapstick you have it's this skinny and co mm-hmm. lip balm mm-hmm. you know what this is yeah no and I was but that's like, how all chapsticks look now which is t- this looks like a woman like every time i put this on Looks like a tampon. Yeah, and, and people look at me like, "Dude, are you a tiny woman putting on a yeah. chapstick?" Or I don't think they're thinking that, but yeah, probably something similar. You they're know? like, "Oh my gosh, I thought you were a tiny." Who's woman. that young woman? Who's, Who's that, that young, young lady? Small woman. Yeah, yeah. Who's that? Dainty? And you have to be like, "Hey, you go behind the chapstick. It's me." Yeah, right. And, and when don't I put it on, don't be scared. Yeah, like this. Mm-hmm. Pucker a little bit more. I look yeah. like a little pussy. I look like a fucking idiot, right? And so I said, you have nothing else besides this? Like, just give me some chapstick, bro. Like, some cherry chapstick. I'll be on my way. No, we don't have that. We have this. And I was like, and they were like, this is way better than the the real chapstick. And I was like, why? It's got CBD in it. Does it? (laughs) Are you high? And I go, what the fuck is that going to do for me? What is that going to, what is CBD and chapstick going to, and they were like, well, if your lips are burned or really yeah, chat, and the I was like, CBD is like a topical thing now. So totally, for, but I'm like, yeah. hey man, I don't have that. It's just cold outside. Right. You know, I just need some chapstick and right. we're, all, we're all good to go. Went to check out this little thing. Six bucks. Shut up. Yeah. And I was like, and I'm in a hurry. I don't have take a choice it back. at that point. Yeah, I know, right? Here. All, all used. Here, you take it I now. don't like it. I don't like this. I'm not into the nostalgia songs. I don't like it. Uh, six bucks for that, and that's what we're doing now. This artisan shit your pants, fucking skinny and co. You know why is it shit your pants? I, I don't. When you when you put it on, it's like it's kind of shocking, and you like your eyes and pop you, open. You poop a little bit. A little bit. Mm. Nothing you can do about that. Well, that's not cool. It comes with uh, one wipe, one baby wipe. I guess for the first application, they're like, oh, you're gonna pop one out, pop a little turd out. So. Here's a here's a wipe uh, with your skinny and co chapstick. <laughs> Go ahead and wipe your pants out after that. You know? I don't understand any of this. Yeah. Uh well, look, all I crave is a simpler time, James. So okay. just give me a fucking come on, man. Give me a chapstick brand, right? It's, a cherry it's, chapstick it's, it's brand. That's all I'm asking. I don't need this skinny thing. Like what's the they It's have longer. Them, this is longer they than have chapstick. Them. They have chapstick brand cherry. God you just need to plan it, ahead. Uh, I know they have them. Yeah, this you just partic- need to plan the, the ahead. The particular store that I was at, I was sure. like, get get beefed. Mm-hmm. Why are you squeezing my beef out? You know, right? Um, why are you tugging on my my balls like that while I'm looking at a why painting? Are you emptying emptying my balls? Yeah, Empt- emptying. That's what you said. Yeah, I'm not emptying my balls all over it or whatever. <laughs> 
You just say things sometimes and I have to clarify because I know the audience hears it. You know what I mean? So I have to be the voice of kind of. Alec, did I say emptying my balls? I don't think I did. Did I? Yeah, he I did. did. Yes. Good for me. That's even better. Good for me. Yeah. God yeah. Damn it, so Ross. I'm here for you guys, not for him. Well. So I'm going to translate all of this bullshit and then somehow the chapstick is making his shit. It, Making him shit his pants? I don't know. So I have to like, I have to ask you and clarify because if the audience just hears that, they're thinking what I'm thinking, which is like, what? When Why you put it the- on, I, this feels like icy hot a little bit. We were just like, ah, oh, that's, woo. That's Does surprising. icy hot make you shit your pants? You know what I mean? It's like a lot of yeah. questions now. When you put it on, it's like, oh man, that's so cold. Like a little poop comes out. I've never like, had that experience. Ooh, that was not expecting that. Huh. Was not expecting that. Kind of yeah. like this, uh, that prickly heat there that I put on my balls. And does that do the same on air? It pulls the, your your testicles back up inside of yourself like a uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. a samurai, uh-huh. and then you're just you're kind of left with this empty sack for, I would say, a good 14 minutes, and that's shocking. Where you're just like, oh, where do those disappear is it to? Shit, your pants, shocking or just no? But like... I lost my balls. Right. I lost two tests. Couldn't find them. Yeah, I lost uh, two testes. <laughs> Couldn't find him. Yeah, for 14 minutes. Yeah, that's shocking. Um, mm-hmm. Some might say they would prefer the poop option. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Again, yeah, I'm yeah. not living your life. You're not living mine. So, again, I'm just, like, clarifying because a lot of stuff that you say is real weird. <laughs> you know Goddamn I mean? right it is. You betcha. And that's Ross Patterson Revolution. For Jesse Wiseman, you know who I am. Uh, don't, don't, don't get this. Don't. Don't don't get the fucking skinny. I guess bulb. dipe up if you're going to. Dipe right? up if you're going to get this. It's going to be <laughs> shocking. No need for it. Unless you were Tom Hanks at the end of Castaway on that fucking, you know, bamboo boat that he built. Just burnt to shit. Yeah, that's that's when you need CBD lip balm is if you're that Tom Hanks burnt in Castaway right before that barge finds him. Oh my him. gosh, the scene with him and Helen Hunt at her house, their house, I don't know. His nuts. Every time. Yeah. Every single time it will get me. I dare you to watch that scene and not cry. <laughs> what? I know. I know. Oh. And then she runs out to the street. Oh, my God. Gets in the car. He drives her back to the door. I mean, yeah. stop it. So much going on. Yeah. Uh, all of that, that entire scene was so real, except for the part where she goes, well, you're here. Here's your car back. What? You know what? Same. I go, oh, and she has to take the kid's seat out. I'm like, what is she going to fucking? It's That's a, a little bit you weird. You just gave away your Jeep Cherokee. And then there's also this idea that like the husband's upstairs. There's a lot like yeah. you feel a lot in yes, that. Yes, yes. Right? And the, the husband's going to be okay with her making out with the, the one, guy? Yeah, and the one feeling I didn't have was like, uh, you gave away your Jeep Cherokee, you know? So what happened last night? I picture that that breakfast in the morning. What happened yeah, last night? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to need husband, a ride to work, right? Why? I gave... The guy that, yeah, that guy that I was married to, and, and then, then we thought he was missing, and then now he's and back, and he came over last night. And we might have fucking kissed a little bit, but I gave him the car. It was his, like, it was his car yeah. technically. Yeah, we got it registered in our name. What are we gonna do now? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah, it was his car five years ago. There's still gonna be some DMV paperwork involved. Yeah, in like you like, can't just hand it off. No, is the kid's seat still in there? No, took that out. Good for you. Yeah, you know what I mean? Oh, cool. That crack. Good foresight on yeah. that. You gave away a thirty-five thousand dollar truck, but uh, you saved Jeep Cherokee. I mean, that was a nice. You saved the car seat, so yeah, you pulled out the car seat. Which again, when she does that, I'm always like, "This is her daily driver, dude. Like, what do you? <laughs> you know what I mean? When, if you have to take the car seat out, it's yeah. not something that's just sitting in the garage. I understand that. She was so over. You know, she was so overcome. She wanted to do something for him. It's a fucking great scene. Dude. Yeah, it is. It is. I was re. I revisited it. In uh, uh, during Thanksgiving, which I love now, and it is a thing. Yes, Thanksgiving is going to be how we celebrate On Thanksgiving. The Network every. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a Hanks movie for every feeling, every time. You because they had Forrest Gump, which is three hours. Yeah, um, Cast Away, which is three hours. Yeah, with commercials that's the four piece. Now we're gonna have this Mister Rogers one. Yeah, we've got the Terminal. No, thank you. Um, you got Splash though, and big. Oh, Splash, big! I mean, my God! You can, Philadelphia, you can go on forever and ever. Philadelphia and ever. on Thanksgiving? Sure. Uh, little aids with ah. your turkey. <laughs> Eesh. Good note to end on. What you reckon? Yeah. Why not? Why not? 
swinging that outro back at you one more time for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Chapes. I'm Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good noche, everyone. Good night. Buenas noches. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Bye.